Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 29, and today's node is the Labs Lot Subdivision sub. So inside of Houdini, at the sub level, we can go ahead and drop down a Labs Lot Subdivision. And this node is going to take a single input, so we can just give it a grid. We're going to drop a grid over here and just drop the rows and columns to two by two. This is just going to give us a single primitive like that. So we plug that into the lot subdivision and it subdivides our geometry up in an irregular manner. Now to quickly understand what it's doing, if we just drop the iterations down to one, you'll see that it takes the primitive that we're feeding it and then splits it into two. And each iteration after that will increase the splits. So as we push this up, it keeps subdividing. As for the irregularity of this, first we have the minimum lot size. As we push this up, you'll notice fewer and fewer of the smaller subdivisions. And then we also have irregularity. When we decrease this, you'll see that it just gives us a perfectly subdivided grid. But as the irregularity goes up, we end up with more randomization. At the bottom over here, we have the option to cluster lots. So what this will do is it will combine multiple lots into single primitives. So you can see over here, each one of these becomes a single primitive. So we can decrease the number of clusters and that will reduce the total number that we end up with. This is going to be potentially more useful for generating interesting shapes when we drop our iterations. So as you can see, when we do this, we can end up with these sorts of shapes. They're not perfect squares, they're composite shapes. Okay, so in and of itself, this node is pretty simple. The actual power of this node comes from what we combine it with. So this is going to be a little bit different in that we're not going to focus on this node so much, as much as we're going to focus on some useful things that we can use with it. So let's just decrease this irregularity slightly and drop the number of iterations, something like that. Now let's say we want to create some sort of city and we want to do it procedurally. There's a couple of useful techniques that might come in handy when doing that. Firstly, we'll do something like a point split. If we take a look currently before we split this up, each and every one of these, so each primitive is connected to the primitive next to it. But when we use these split points, it'll actually make each one of these a separate primitive. This is useful because then we can use something like a primitive properties. You grab this over here, do transformation and scale them all down, right? So you end up with something like that. Then we could take another lot subdivision right over here, something like that. And then we can use a poly extrude and just extrude these up, right? Now, these may not look like buildings, but what we can do from here is we can add a randomization. So attribute randomize, plug it in before the poly extrude, set this to Z scale, change the dimensions to one. And on the poly extrude under the local control, we can use Z scale as the distance scale. And of course, this needs to be a primitive class. And just like that, we have it working. The other thing is on this poly extrude, a useful thing to do is to also change this to individual elements. This will make sure that we're not focused too much on what's connected. We just want to move each and every element. And then of course, you can make changes to the minimum over here. And then it's as easy as doing a Boolean with your original grid to end up with something that could be used as roads, right? So of course you would want to do something more invested, but this is the general idea of how you could go about generating buildings. So that would be a very practical use case. And the focus here is that we are working with primitives and not with points, right? We want each and every one of these lots that is generated for us to be worked on individually. So just some other cool things. If we just go ahead and use a sphere, it doesn't have to always be a grid. So we can change this to a polygon, increase the size of this, decrease the frequency, and let's use a lot subdivision. As you can see, what it does is it always splits up each and every primitive individually. So each one of these primitives will be subdivided individually. And this sort of thing could be really useful for making some sort of sci-fi look. Once again, we can split points, primitive properties, randomize Z-scale. So primitives and Z-scale, extrude individual elements, activate Z-scale, and then perhaps something like a poly bevel to end up with something like this. So this is a pretty cool abstract sci-fi type look. Also keeping in mind that it always uses primitives, we can also do something like a Voronoi fracture. So let's just use a Voronoi over here, scatter a few points onto the grid. We'll just scatter 10. This just gives us this Voronoi fracture. Then we can take this and use our split points and primitive properties, run some lot divisions on that, do the split again, randomize Z scale, poly extrude. Additionally, if we have a bunch of lots, it may be useful to figure out the area of which one is biggest. So if we use a lot subdivision, the useful node may be a measure node. So we measure over here. And what this will give us is the area. So if we take a look at this, we have area, visualize it. 
you can see that the red ones are the biggest ones and these blue ones are the smallest ones. So we can use this for actually figuring out where we want to scatter particular things or generate buildings. So you could remove particular blocks based on their area. If you want to individually work on a bunch of blocks, you can use a for each loop using the primitive. So for each primitive, just like this. And this will give you access to each and every one of these. So if we go to single pass, you can run through them. Now, this is also extremely useful because you can build entire networks inside of here and run particular operations on each and every block. So in and of itself, it's a very simple node, right? All it does is just subdivide irregularly, but you end up with all sorts of really cool results if you just get a bit creative with how you use it. So I hope that this gave you some ideas on how you can use the lot subdivision node and also an idea of some of the more useful tools to use with it. So that's all for this video. I'll be seeing you tomorrow for day 30, and that's going to be the labs region from ImageSub. So I'll see you then.